making a steam plant using three Cotswold Heritage steam engines. And this is part four, the condenser oil trap and the water tank. After I edited and watched back the first video, I realized that the copper tubing that was originally going to use for the condenser and the water tank were just too big. As the boiler is only three and a half inches in diameter, it just didn't look right when the condenser and the water tank were almost as big as the boiler. So I'm going to cut this piece of copper tube and I'm trying to decide how tall it should be. Four inches is too small and five inches is about right. So it's over to the bandsaw to cut it. When cutting tubing on a bandsaw like this, which is not very rigid, it's a good idea to support the arm. The arm on this bandsaw is sort of adjustable by altering the tension of a spring, but really it's not enough. So I'm supporting this with my hand and controlling how quickly the bandsaw blade cuts through the piece of copper tubing. If I just leave the bandsaw to its own devices and put the blade on top of the metal, the blade will tend to wander about and the cut will not be very square. As you can clearly see in this clip, I keep retracting the blade altogether. And by doing this, I finally get a really nice square cut piece of copper tubing. And the first one's already done. Here it goes. And in this part of the clip, I'm using the first piece to help set the position of the copper tube to cut the second piece. I can't remember where this piece of copper tube came from. It's been in the workshop for quite a long time, obviously just sat there waiting to be used in the steam plant. It has some paint on it and it's a bit marked in places, but it really doesn't matter because it's going to be cleaned up and painted black anyway to match the boiler. This bandsaw sequence is not running in real time, it's at twice normal speed and in no time at all the second piece is cut. And here are the two pieces sat on the bench. Still warm from the cutting process and a bit rough around the edges. One of these pieces of copper tube will form the condenser oil trap and the other one will be the water tank. I think they're about the right height, they look okay. I'm just trying to figure out how far away they should be from each other. Normally I put pieces of copper tube like this into the chuck of the larger of my two lathes and turn the end square. But if I put this piece of copper tubing in the forge or self-centering chuck that is fitted to the larger of my two lathes, it's still not going to work. It would be sticking out too far from the chuck, and the minute I applied the cutting tool, everything would go very wrong. There are two or three techniques that you could employ that would make it feasible. You could use a thing called a fixed steady. The steady clamps to the lathe bed and is used for supporting the part of the work that's the furthest from the chuck. Or I could turn a large steel mandrel that fits inside the copper tube and goes into the chuck. Or even turn up a wooden plug to fit in the outer part of the copper tube, which could be centre drilled and then supported by the tailstock live centre. But after all that, the quickest method is definitely to use a belt sander like you've seen me do. By using a set square to frequently check the squareness of the end, it's surprising how accurate you can actually get it. And the only reason that I have the copper tubing in the lathe is just to illustrate how close it is to being square, and I didn't take any serious cuts. This very useful gadget is called a deburring tool, because it's used for deburring pieces of metal like this. You just run the blade round the inside edge of the hole or opening, and it removes any burrs. You can use it for removing burrs from very small drilled holes as well. They really aren't very expensive and they're an essential workshop tool to make the job easier. So here are the two pieces of copper tubing with the ends cleaned up and they're both exactly the same length. And now by using the lathe it's time to clean up the outside. A health and safety warning, this can be very dangerous if you don't do it right. This is a long piece of emery cloth and my hands are nowhere near the chuck jaws. It looks like my hands are close to the work but they're not, it's just the camera angle. It is vital that you do not hold on to the ends of the emery cloth too tightly. Just hold it lightly, that way if it does catch up in the chuck, it pulls it out of your hands and doesn't pull your hand into the work. As I clean up the copper tube, I notice there's a bit of a dint on this one, but luckily it is in exactly the same place where I'm going to put the water fitting. And after being very grateful for having such luck, I turn my attention to the other piece of tubing. The process is exactly the same as for the first piece. And once again, I'm holding the piece of emery cloth very lightly. In no time at all, the job is completed. And with all of my fingers still intact, I'm using a piece of Scotch Brite to further clean up the outside of the two pieces of copper tubing. As I mentioned earlier, the dinted part of the tube is exactly where I need it to be. When I lift the copper tubing off the bench to simulate the thickness of the base, you will see that it's just about the same height as the union 
on the inlet to the pump. So now it's over to the drilling machine to drill the holes in the copper tubing and here is a very rare sight of me actually using a vacuum cleaner to clean up my machine tools. I'm drilling a hole in the piece of copper tubing which is two imperial sizes down from 5 sixteenths of an inch which is 9 30 seconds of an inch and here I'm using an ME 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch tap to cut the thread in the copper. And in case you've never seen any of my videos before, ME stands for Model Engineering. That was the water tank and this one is the condenser and I'm drilling this hole nearer to the edge of the copper tube. After which I thread it in the same way. Once again it's an ME 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch tap. I don't normally write on the copper tubing, I've just done it for the video. One of them says T for tank and the other says C for condenser. It's time to screw the brass union fittings into the side of the copper tubing. Now I'm going to make the base. Don't take any notice of the felt tip pen line, I'm using the guide on the bandsaw to cut it squarely. So here's the plan, I'm going to mount both the condenser and the water tank on a common brass base. And the idea of this is so that the heat from the condenser will travel along the metal base into the water tank and warm up the water. I need to drill a mounting hole in each of the four corners of the base. I've made a mark with a felt tip pen where I want the hole to be. I check it with the ruler but it's in the right place anyway. All I have to do now is drill a hole exactly in the centre of the black spot. Not good engineering practice I know but it works for me and it's quick and it's accurate. Once I've drilled the first hole all I do is drill the rest because I'm using a jig. This piece of wood clamped in the machine vise with a piece of metal does the trick. As I turn the brass sheet over the hole is always in the same position and this is what it looks like when around the edges. And here are the two copper tubes in the approximate position on the brass sheet base. And now, here's a view of the main wooden base with all of the components in their approximate position too. I may end up moving the position slightly as I develop the plant, but this is more or less I think how it's going to be. The pump is away from the boiler, so there's no chance of burning your hand, and the gas is over the other side. Yes, I think this is possibly how it's going to be. This is a very good quality baseboard. A customer provided this and I think he varnished it as well, so it will be an ideal complement to the quality of the parts on the board itself. That's about it for this episode. In the next one I will finish the condenser and the water tank. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.